so difficult also in yeah. Italian. Don't worry. It's Riccardo Ricci Curbasto. Curbasto. Yes. There Thank you, you very much. Thanks for inviting me. And you are from? I'm coming from uh, Italy, of course, but north of Italy in Lombardy in a wine region that is called Franciacorta. Franciacorta. Franciacorta is not familiar to many Americans. So if you could please tell us a little bit about it and what makes it stand out from the other regions of uh, Italy. So we're talking about a very little wine region that has a very ancient heritage. We go back to the Roman time, then the Middle Age when the name Franciacorta appeared because we had monks coming from Cluny that settled down in the area. They brought in Chardonnay and uh, uh, white Pinot, Pinot Bianco, that are two of the three grapes that we still grow. And uh, uh, these monks were so powerful to be independent from the local bishop, so they were building clusters that were free clusters. In Latin, Franche Curte, in Italian, Franche Corta. So the origin of the name goes back 10 centuries. Uh, in Franche Corta, we had the first book ever written about sparkling wine. In 1570, Gerolamo Conforti, a physician, wrote a book ab about uh, the sparkling wine studying how the carbonic dioxide was affecting the digestion. Today we know that uh, the carbonic dioxide is helping the digestion, but at that time it was very new for, uh, for the physicians and of course for those that were drinking sparkling wines. Uh, by the way, French Accorta, it's a small secret because it's a small region. We are talking about only 18 million bottles that are produced each year to compare it with uh, 320 million bottles of champagne, to compare with uh, over half a billion bottles of uh, Prosecco. So you can understand how French Accord is still unfamiliar for many consumers uh, in America and all over the world. Uh, what is making French Accord especially is that we have been uh, uh, always uh, working to achieve the better quality that is possible. Today, the French Accord uh, law is behind our uh, our wines is the more restrictive in the world. A longer aging period in the bottle, the lower crop in the fields, and so on. Everything has been done to achieve the better quality. And I must say that the critic is uh, recognizing that French Accord is something uh, different, something that is standing out on the market of the sparkling wines. Even if you have to remember that we never call it French Espumante, we just call it French Accorda. French Accorda. Very interesting. Uh, my wife and I were at an Italian restaurant in Orlando, north of Orlando, in Altamont Springs uh, the other night, and uh, I specifically asked if he had any uh, French Accorda wine, and he did. So I was uh, very pleased to see that. He had three bottles in stock, so not a lot, but there. He tries to represent uh, most of the wines. Uh, in Italy, and I was pleased to see that he had that. Now, your your family has a very close tie to French Corte, is that correct? Or, yes, or the we, we, we own the estate since uh, 18 generations, so my family goes back in the area uh, to the uh, 1380 year, so uh, a few centuries ago, and of course my father was among the 11 founders of the appellation 1967, when French Accorda became uh, one of the very first appellation uh, of Italy. Uh, remember that the Italian law on, uh, on the appellation was uh, given in 1964, so the very first appellations were 66 and 67. Uh, from that moment on, from 11 producers, we arrived today, uh, we are around uh, 120 producers, and the production has been also growing a lot. But we've always been working, looking uh, beside the tradition and uh, forward on innovation and high quality. Well, the uh, methodology that you use to produce your sparkling wine, is it uh, like the Charmat uh, system or is it more like the French? Uh... Uh, we do bottle fermentation, so what the French call uh, method Champenoise and what we call method of French Accorda in, in, in Italy. But by the way, on a bottle of French Accorda, you will only see French Accorda. But the method is not written 
as is not written on Champagne. These are the only two wines that are recognized only by their appellation, their own name. Champagne of French Accorda, you talk about something that has special rules, but it's uh, recognized just by his name. Is uh, the region uh, granted a DOC or a DOCG? Uh, we are were originally at DOC, then in 1995, we got also the DOCG. At that time, I was the president of the consortium, so I was the one that applied for the DOCG and we brought it to French Accorda. So what makes a French Accorda stand out in your mind from an Asti or from a Champagne or from a Prosecco? Well, I already mentioned the rules, uh, the productive rules, but I would say that is the soil and the climate that makes the difference in French Accorda. French Accorda, it's a morainic area, was created by a glacier that came down from the Alps and engraved a valley and a lake, the Lake of Iseo that is just behind us. And uh, we live on the hills that were created by the stones brought by the ice and the water. Uh, so it's a very uh, mineral soil, rich of different minerals, and uh, the soil change every, every few yards. So you have many different uh, soil profiles. So I also own vineyards in three different villages because in this way we can better pick up the differences that are typical of French Accorda. Blending these differences, so Chardonnay, Pinot Bianco and Pinot Nero, different soils, my climate, blending them, it's uh, like uh, creating a painting. If we all have the same colors, each one of us will paint something different, even looking at the same subject. Why? Because we paint with our aims. We paint with our brain. Everything is passing through our brain. And my brain is different, definitely different from yours. Uh, and I have different point of views. So my blend will be uh, something that it's uh, uh, easy to recognize because I'm starting from something that is common, minerality, common for the region, we have variety, freshness, and then I arrive to something that is my own painting. So I create something that is different from my neighbor and my colleague. So since you are also using a, a Pinot Nero, uh, do, you, do you produce a rosé? Yes, we do a, a rosé 80% Pinot Noir. So I, I always, believe that the French Accorda Rosé is uh, something that should have high percentage of uh, Pinot Nero, uh, Pinot Noir. Why? Because I'm expecting a Rosé to be a light red and not just a, a dirty white. I mean, it's not just a matter of taking a white wine and add some color. It's something completely different. We do skin content, so we keep the, the most on its own skins for a few hours together with the color we have an extraction of tannins. So these tannins are giving the wine, the French Accorda Rosé, the character of a light red. So the Rosé is definitely the wine that is perfect on charcuterie, salami and ham, will be very nice on a grill in summer because it has the structure to stay close to the meat, but at the same time it has the acidity for the fat or the bloody notes of the grill. Uh, so it will be a perfect pairing with that. And again, with the Italian pasta, with a lasagna, Pasta, rosé in summer, it's... Uh, ah, so, it's sounds wonderful. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, when you open a bottle, let's, let's differentiate from the uh, rosé to the, to the white French Accorda. When you open a bottle of the white French Accorda, what would you expect to, to uh, get in the nose and the taste of the uh, wine? Well, I'm expecting a lot of freshness. Uh, I'm expecting uh, some flavors that, that are remembering the grapes. So on the side of Chardonnay, you will have more uh, tropical fruits. On the side of Pinot Bianco, you will have more floral, white floral notes. On the Pinot Nero, you will expect uh, probably more structure in the wine. So depending from the blend, you will have different French Accorda. Uh, I'm expecting something very different due to the dosage. If I open a French Accorda Extra Brut, I will have something very dry. That's a perfect matching with an aperitif or again with entries. So we like the French Accorda on the shellfish, on, uh, on the raw fish. It's uh, perfectly matching with this kind of, uh, uh, of uh, food. 
if I open a brute that it's a little bit more mild, I might have a wine that is a perfect pairing with an aperitif, even without food. It's a glass to start your dinner. And then you might end the bottle again with the entries. I mean, again, on, on fish and the shellfish on oysters, it will be a very nice pairing. Mm, that sounds wonderful. And finally, if I open a satin brute that is more structured, I expect a wine that, like silk, satin is coming from silk, it's rich in the structure. So a perfect wine to match with a, a fish or white meat. Well, not only am I getting hungry, I'm getting thirsty. Uh, of course. This has been very enlightening. I hope uh, that you all uh, enjoyed learning a little bit about Franciacorta from one of the uh, leaders of the area. And when you go ask for a sparkling wine at your local wine store, try a French Accorda. We hope that you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Enjoy Ricardo your location. Thank you. Okay. Grazie. Grazie.